Hello and welcome to another technical takedown the hard way in today's video. Okay, so I've been talking a lot about Land Rover recently and a lot of you people might have thought that I have made my choice in terms of the type of overland vehicle I'm going to be using for the Lap of Africa expedition that I plan to go on at the end of this year. But I haven't. I'm still keeping an open mind. But the reality is that there are so many pluses, there are so many positives to owning and driving around the continent in a Land Rover. I know many of you people are listening to this. If you know anything about Overland, if you know anything about the four wheel drive community, you will probably think that I am kind of crazy when I say this. But in today's video, I wanted to talk a little bit more about why it is actually quite beneficial for someone like me to drive around the continent and overland in a Land Rover as opposed to a Nissan or a Toyota. First, if you haven't already, I'd like to ask you to please like and subscribe and share the video. It will help this channel to grow. I'm trying to get it to the point in which it will make me a couple of hundred bucks during my journey around the continent towards the end of the year. So I haven't even been monetized yet because I haven't got a thousand subscribers yet, which I totally understand. But I'm very patient and I'm hoping that I can try to get this channel monetized before the end of the year. So please like, please subscribe, please share the video and that will help me and hopefully it will help a lot of the people that I'm planning to help along the way during this journey. Thank you very much. So if you check up on YouTube, just type in Land Rover uh, defects or Land Rover recall or Land Rover breakdown, you know, unreliable. Type that into YouTube, type it into Google and see what comes up. You will get thousands of results that will come up because it seems as though everybody has a problem with this vehicle. And I think that if you look at the people who do drive Land Rovers, the Land Rover fraternity, the, the groups, the discussion groups, these types of people are a special type of people because they drive around in a vehicle that they know chances are inherently when the car gets a problem, the problem rarely seems to be a small problem. It is normally either a big problem or a small problem that shouldn't really exist. And it has that name, even with its newer vehicles. And this is a brand that has been around for decades. Since the end of World War II, this brand has been around in some form or another. So it's not like they haven't had the opportunity to do something about their quality control or about making their cars renowned for being more reliable. It's almost as if we have all just accepted that the car that we purchase when we buy a Land Rover, that at some point it's going to break down and it's probably going to be at a time in which we really least want it to happen. I told you about my own Velar that I had brand new and I had it a few days and I didn't put add blue into the vehicle and the vehicle just stopped running. It was about a week I think. I think it's just turned off. Not only did it stop running but I had to get a technician out to the vehicle to recalibrate and restart and do everything that needs to be done to get the car started. It took some time. I thought it was going to be a 15 minute thing. He was there for a couple of hours, making sure that the car was able to drive again. I've got to give a big shout out to Land Rover for coming out so quickly as well. They came out so quick. It was very, very uh, nice to see that. So a lot of respect to Land Rover. Thank you for that. So you've heard me talking about the new Defender 130 and how it's the perfect vehicle. Can I say that it's a perfect vehicle? For me, if I look at the statistics, if I look at the dimensions, if I look at the, the car's you know, capabilities, yeah. For this journey, I'm looking to keep things light, compact. I'm looking to try and do everything in my power to make sure that I don't break down, which means I do not want to modify the vehicle uh, mechanically if I can at all. I don't want to do anything for the mechanics. I want to drive the vehicle the way it is. Uh, I'm not planning on doing any rock crawling, so for me, that's all good. But now I've got to look at what type of vehicle I'm having. 
new versus old okay should i buy a new land rover should i buy an old land rover what which one would be the best one for me clearly a new land rover would have less of a chance of breaking down although if i have a new land rover it's unlikely that i will bring it to the really remote places where we would be putting the vehicle in a place in which if the worst absolutely does happen we can't just leave the vehicle there if it's a brand new vehicle if it's a 15 year old land rover discovery three and it's got 300,000 miles on the clock and i haven't really done much with modifying it then of course, then I could, if the worst comes to the worst, I can make my way out to the jungle and make my way to the nearest airport. Now clearly that is the, just the worst, worst case scenario. I think that if I'm with my family, I think we need to do everything in our power to get back on the road. After a long day of driving, I park the Jeep on a bit of a hill and get out to take a photo. I leave it in first gear and pull the handbrake as hard as I can and then turn the engine off and double check that it's not going to go anywhere. I've only taken about 10 steps away from it when I see it start to move. Obviously the compression is low enough that the weight can turn the engine over. Before I've taken three steps to catch up to it, it's already rolled a car length and then another and then another. The front driver's tyre strikes the rock wall hard and that kicks it over onto its side. I remember watching a video with Dan Grek with his vehicle when his vehicle overturned and he just had his life flash before his eyes. <laughs> it was really uh, surreal to listen to him speak about this situation where he thought his journey was over whilst he was watching his vehicle rolling back and then rolling onto its side. This is a nightmarish scenario, but he managed to get the car upturned because he was uh, there with the locals and the locals helped him to upright his vehicle once again and his vehicle had very little damage so he got back on the road and he continued his journey so let, let's get into this what are the positives to driving a land rover well for me the one of the major benefits of driving a land rover especially driving an older land rover is having that network having the people there to support me if things go wrong now what do i mean by that I'm from Birmingham. I'm from Birmingham, the UK. I was born and raised there, okay? My father worked at Land Rover 40 years ago, okay? So we have a, an affinity with the brand and with the company and with the products. But being from Birmingham, you also have uh, a lot of people who own Land Rovers there in Birmingham. They know it's Birmingham made, built, uh, maybe not so much designed anymore, but they know it's a much well-loved child of Birmingham and the people there, this brand. And we do enjoy and love the, the, the fact that it promotes our city all around the world. But the best part about it is having that, the, 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 the aftermarket sales, the small companies that specialize in Land Rover parts. I can sit here right now and confidently name two companies out of the top of my head right now that I have known for years since I was even before I was interested in even buying a Land Rover five years ago. I knew these companies. Everybody knows these companies in Birmingham that do supplies for vehicles, uh, specially built, you know, in the Midlands. So we're talking about Caterhams, we're talking about uh, Land Rover, of course and the old Austins and everything else as well. That is what I'm talking about. If something goes wrong, if I need a part, right, I have somebody that I can turn to, I can speak to. I know where they are. I know who I'm speaking to. I can give them a call up. I can ask my brother to go and, and pick up the part for me and just stick it in the post if worse comes to the worst. And I think that is a major positive for me and um, if I'm looking to go down buying an old Land Rover route. I'm hoping I don't get to, into that situation, but guys, 50,000 miles, it's going to happen, okay? And I think it's better to make the assumption that I'm going to be in a sticky situation mechanically at some point. So this is what I'm talking about, getting in a situation where I have just that little bit of backup, a little bit of knowledge about uh, who I can turn to uh, for any particular part and um, anyone who can ship that part to me 
as quickly as possible if and when we need it. So for me, that is a major positive. I don't have that affinity with Nissan or Toyota or Jeep or anybody else, okay? I don't have that. So uh, it, this is what I am saying. I need to be pretty sure that I can help myself out of a dodgy, sticky situation instead of having to run to Land Rover and get apart from them, which is going to cost me an arm and a leg. I want to put the romance aside and put the, you know, the functionality, the, 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 the logistics of this mission, okay? It's important that I get everything done as safely and as reliably as possible. I need to make sure that I can be on the road for as long as I can without anything going wrong. And I think the way I best do that is, first of all, to buy a vehicle which is able to meet our requirements and also make sure that that vehicle um, is has been taken care of if we buy a second hand one once again if i want to buy a vehicle like that i can i can easily source one in in the uk it's very easy for me to source one in the uk being british i can source one in the uk so this is a positive for me i can do that so that's the reason why those are my reasons why i feel pretty confident about talking about land rover and about their offerings at this pre at this present moment i'm going to talk again i'm going to make another video about whether or not i should buy a new vehicle or an old vehicle and we're going to talk about the benefits and the negatives about buying either old or new we're, we're what five months away that's not a long time really because buying the vehicle driving the vehicle, getting to know the vehicle, getting to know the vehicle mechanics, and then modifying uh, the inside uh, so the vehicle can have its shelves, can, I can have my drawers, my, my container uh, units in the back. I need to design those. And of course, the rooftop tent will also need to be designed, okay? Five months is a very short period of time to do all those things okay so uh, i've really got to get on with things and so now i'm kicking things into overdrive and so you guys are going to have a front row seat into what is happening over the next few months because things are really going to go you know be accelerated the plans will be accelerated and you're going to see that for yourself in the next few videos so that's all i got time for today like thank you for watching and i will see you in the next one to our bit.